What do we got? What we have here is the Kalila 12. You know what I see? What? I see a miniature. I know. It's nice, right? And you know what I like about it? Yeah. It's actually the shape miniature. of the bottle. Shape of the bottle. And, 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 and. It's got a little cork. An actual cork. Right? Is that awesome? I'm they, so happy. They did a beautiful job with the packaging. Yeah, I'm so happy. So we've reviewed a lot of single cast Kalilas. We have. A lot. We have. A lot. We have. A lot. Some. I mean, we've had Berry Brothers and Rudd. We've had them from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. We've had them from... Gordon McPhail? Maybe a signatory? Maybe signatory. All maybe over the place. maybe like the Impex Collection. All over the Maybe place. the Single Malts of Scotland. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, everybody's got one. And every single time I review them, I always say I prefer the single barrels to the bottled ca- Kalila 12. You know, just the regular That's standard issue. Standard issue. Cool. But here's the rub. I don't remember the last time I had a Kalila 12. You know what's convenient? What? That's a Kalila 12. Exactly. How about that? So I was doing a little bit of post-Christmas shopping. Mm-hmm. And I had a little bit of money to burn. So I popped into a local liquor store. And they had like little, like three packs of the, the classic mall mm-hmm. collection. And this particular one, which the packaging is spectacular, comes in a nice little box. It's got a little latch, three little bottles. This one, I was like, you know, I don't think we reviewed, you know, the Klein Leash either. And I know that the Klein Leash is a big thing in the Compass box yep. because John Glazer loves Klein Leash. So I picked this one up. And also, I want to go back and revisit the Cali the 12. Sure, sure, sure. So let's do that. So why don't you pour? And, and for minis, these mm-hmm. aren't hundreds, are they? No, the two hundred. Oh, no, no. So we can have many. Right. So we can try trips. this for a while. We can share many it. trips. It's good. Or it's just good. one really big trip. Yes. So I'm going to read a little bit about it. Uh, so the Kalila 12-year-old single malt scotch whiskey. The ultimate Isla malt. Kalila is considered by experts to be the perfect entry point into the world of PD malt whiskeys and a reference for connoisseurs of Isla single malt scotch whiskey the world over. Fresh, sweetly fruity, and smooth-bodied, Kalila 12 is the color of pale straw with a delicate balance of tastes. So, that's it what It is say. the color of pale straw. It is. It really, really is. Let me just make sure I got this centered here. I have that, 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 that there. And a little bit of that. Okay, we're good to go. All right, sir. Cheers. Cheers. So, you know, I've been bad-mouthing this whiskey, and I'm like, you know, i got to go back and try it. I've gotten so used to the big, punchy ones. Yeah. You know, like, uh, the West Coast office was kind enough to give me a, uh, what was the one? Berry Brothers and Rudd? And it was like an eight-year or nine-year-old Kalila? In a a beautiful gold tin? Oh, it was spectacular. It was spectacular. And it was cheap. It was like 60 bucks. It was a fantastic bottle of whiskey. Okay. You know what? Not particularly vapory on the nose. But this is no slouch. But it's 43%, so not all Mm. the vapors, as you expect. But you do get a lot of the brimstone. (laughs) You get a lot of that. You get a lot of that. You know... At least on the nose, I'm going to take back everything I said because this is pretty damn spectacular. It's like lightly smoky. It's not super smoky. It's not like that that Lafroy smoke no, 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 no. or that you're hard bag smoke. Not, you're not in the bog. You're not cutting the peat. This is like a little more gentle. But you know it's there. What? Oh yeah, absolutely. There's a little bit of like sweetness to it. A little bit of like vanilla, you know, and 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 then that gentle smoke. All right, I'm going to go for a taste. I went in and I chewed my whiskey. That is, that's a nice drink. That is, that's a nice drink. Again, I think the issue that I have is, this is at 43%, mm-hmm. and so many of the independent bottlings are at the higher ABV. Yes. That maybe I'm dinging this because it doesn't have the punch because of the ABV. Correct. Not because it isn't a good whiskey on Correct. Its that, that, it checks all the boxes. I mean, that's a nice whiskey. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go back and, and i got to say... It just lacks some of the oomph that right. I think I'm familiar with from the Society bottlings and from that Berry Brothers one that you got. Mm. They were they were really punchy. Where this is, There's nothing wrong with this. Mm. This is a nice... And again, if, if you were... We talk about table whiskey all the time. Right. Getting somebody to, to like whiskey by stepping into space on. Right. Um, if you were trying to get somebody to... to Dip a toe into Isla. Mm-hmm. This isn't really offensive. You no. don't get all the the, the tr- you're getting more barbecue than you are getting mm-hmm. um, like clam bake. Yeah. You're getting clam bake more than you're getting mm-hmm. ash. That where, is delicious. That's a that's a nice whiskey. You know, I'm going to take back everything that's I said. That's a nice whiskey. This is very good. Now I don't know what the price point is in the U.S. for yeah. this. Yeah. Like I I really can't say. I don't think it's 
too bad. Here, hang on, let me take a look. Hang on a second. So Total Wine has it for sixty-eight dollars. See, that's where it gets tough because you could find some single casts that are going to be a higher ABV for probably around the same price. And I think they're a really big producer. Oh, they're, they must be huge. Yeah, I think Kalu was uh, really big. The society puts the distillery first, mm -hmm. and then the number of casks they've taken. Right. And in the you know thirty years the society been around, whatever it is, forty years, they're over three hundred casks that they've okay. taken. So they're doing you know eight, ten casks a year right. for these guys, and they're not the only ones. You know, mm -hmm. Berry Brothers, Signatory, Gordon McPhail, you know, Single Malt of Scotland. Impacts, they're all pulling off casks that don't meet up to this particular flavor profile. Right. That you know, somebody at the <laughs> distillery is going, Nope, this one's not going to do it. Or it's overproduction because I think a lot of this goes into like the Johnny Walkers. Yeah, and they're rolling into other stuff too. So they're, they're, they must produce a tremendous amount of whiskey relative yeah. to their neighbors. And it, that's that's just a really good whiskey. It's, it's good. not as uh, punchy as I've expected. But then that, again, that might be a function of the ABV. It's all the you know, ABV. and it's not a single cask. No, so no, this is no, going to no. be a batch. Yep, you know, yep. they take a whole yep. bunch, roll on a profile, you know, and they get just, a flavor and, down, and they get it down to forty-three. Yep. So and it's just it's really good, and honestly, I can't give it less than like an A minus. Yeah, it's a good one. I really can't. That's, that, that's just solid. You know, it's it's you know the other stuff in the classic malt is going to be like the Lagavulin sixteen. You know, I think they're also they're also a Diageo product. And that's also really, really excellent and really readily available. So, I mean, it's as good as that. And it's a little different because it's not as punchy. It's a little bit more of a gentle... Yeah, it's not as peaty. It's more of a gateway to Isla. Yeah. And I, I think that is, is a good point. It's, it's to get your toe in. Yeah. Try something with a little bit of peat. And if you like it, then it's like, oh boy, you've just, you've just opened up a can of worms. What do you got there? And if you like it... You step into the stampede of Pete. Oh, ho, ho. From, the, from the fine folks at the at society. The society. Uh, so this is an eleven-year-old. Okay. And it's coming in at fifty-eight percent. God. This is bottle number uh, fifty-three point two ninety-seven. The stampede of Pete. It's one of two hundred sixty-three bottles. This was distilled in September twenty-fourth of two thousand and seven in a refill Hogshead X bourbon. Mm. And uh, let me read the ridiculous notes. Okay. Fried Thai noodles with shrimps, followed by a rush of peat on the palate oh. neat. Diluted. Peat smoked sweet scallops. A riveting experience. So we can try this as a little bit of a We're gonna try side by side. We're doing that? Do it now. Do it now. a little oh. bit of side by side. We don't have to review this. We can just try this and say this is what 43% tastes like, and this is what something else tastes <laughs> like. This is what 30% like. more this powerful. Something else tastes like. Good God. So you can see what it could become and oh. see if we can pick up the initial flavors okay. in there. Or not. You got, you got another glass? You just put it in the same glass, it doesn't matter. It's so peat, it's not going to be that much different. It's not like you're having, we just have rinds. Just have glasses. Oh, they're, these are the same glasses. Yes. I'll give you a little rinse here. No, it's fine. Just take Don't a little bit of that it. 43%. Ah, that's fine. Just throw it in there. You're like a dirty glass. Just throw pressure. it in there. Dirty man, dirty glass, doesn't matter. Filthy. Filthy man. Easy. Easy. Okay. Easy there, big Easy. fella. Whoa, big fella. Whoa. You know, we got the... We got the glug glug. I know we did. We didn't get a glug glug with the other one. Oh, most beautiful sound in the world. All right, let me put this guy back here again. So this is... What it's, what's it called? So this is a Stampede of Pete. Stampede of Pete. Stampede of Pete. That's and it's going to taste or uh, have flavor profiles for a lot of, like a clam bake, a lot of uh, mm. seafood. Again, not as vapory as you'd expect, 58%. No. But delicious on the nose. Much, much bigger. Oilier, the whole bit. The whole bit. It's just a bigger version of this. But this is a lot more oily. Yeah, a lot and more it's got really, more texture. I think a lot more salinity. Yeah. It has more texture, more depth. Again, I think we're we're dinging the 12 because we're so used to getting right. something like this right. from the independent bottlers where the 12, it's still a really good whiskey. The, the 12, it's again, really I'm, I'm going A- minus on this bad boy. It's a really whiskey. I'm sticking with an A- minus on that. This is a fantastic bottle, though. That is very good. I shouldn't have opened that, this with that you. Is, that is very good. I should good. have kept this for myself. That is very good. Because but it's just, I'm a hoarder. You know, it's like it's like this is maybe at, like, you remember, remember Spinal Tap? 
<laughs> this is maybe at like an eight. <laughs> this is like an eight on the P scale. And this takes it up to 11. This is an 11? We're going to 11? But it's not, but it's not ridiculously big. Like, you know, some of the really punchy mm -hmm. frogs or something like that. It just, it's just amped up a little bit. It's not so punchy you're uh, you know, off put by it or afraid of it. You know, obviously it's 30% more potent, yeah. right? Because we're going from 40, 43 to 58. Yeah. So what's that? What's the math? It's about 33%. It's a little more than 33% more potent from an ABV perspective. You know, but but it's oilier. It's a little richer tasting. But I think it's just because these guys don't chill filter at all. Yeah. You know, they're just basically pouring and out. The, and the barrels are, this is an 11. This is 12. Right. They're basically... Comparable. The same comparable right. age. And this is, is going to be, again, this is, more this is the, the blend other. of barrels. <laughs> they just make a really good whiskey. Mm -hmm. Kudos to them. Mm. You know, whether they're rolling out the base for the classic malts or selling off the big barrels <sighs> for the independent bottlers, they, uh, they do a tremendous job. I think the really the biggest difference, I mean, besides the ABV and all that, I think they're comparable. I think they're mm -hmm. both in the same range, but the mouthfeel on this yeah, is a little it's better. better. Yeah, it's a little better. bit, it's a little oilier. And, and I'm going to guess a big part of that is the ABV. Yeah. That once you add, right. You because know, there's less water added. Every couple of points, it's a little less water down. And that, I think, is really the big difference. Yeah. I mean, flavor, it's just, it's just a bigger whiskey. Again, it's 33% yeah. yeah, yeah, more powerful. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be there. But the mouthfeel is, I think, what makes this marginally better than that. Yeah. But that being said, this is a solid A minus. And next time I see it in a bar, if it's not ridiculous and they're not trying to beat me over the head with the price, I would order one. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Especially like if you're it. looking at something with a little bit of peat to it. It's good, it's consistent, yeah. it's delicious. So when you go into a bar, any Glen will do, except if they have Kalila. Yeah. Then you want Kalila. Oh, absolutely. Push the cleanse aside. Absolutely. Grab a little bit of that. Yep. So, sir. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks for, for sharing that. Thanks for sharing that. Hey, anytime. Anytime.